Hello there, my name is Larry, and I'm going to teach you all about the history of Final Fantasy XIV again. So you guys know about the rising event going on right now. Uh, yeah. they, they do this every year that. to celebrate the anniversary of Final Fantasy XIV. And actually, this person right here is Minfilia. Uh, yeah, that's 1.0 oh, yeah. Minfilia. Yeah, and, and now she doesn't even talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She just sells us wine now. <laughs> Thanks, Minfilia. And my favorite version of that's this right. event, they had us go onto the floor of the Square Enix office that was the development room for Final Fantasy XIV. Mm -hmm. So Yoshi P was there. All of the developers had their characters there. That's this, really like, cool. Fictional I like this. Floor of the Square Enix building. And yeah, they would all talk to us and, and tell us about the jobs that they do at the Square Enix office. Oh my and god. And actually, that's where they teased Red Mage and Blue Mage at the time because neither of those were in the game yet. You know this. Place, I never right? played Blue Mage. Uh, I, I want to try that yeah, out. Yeah, it didn't always look like this. This was the end game zone back in Heavensward, and this was where everybody would hang out and they would show off all their cool gear throughout all the patches in Heavensward, they slowly built this place up. Mm -hmm. Like, this was not a building. This this used to be just tents out here. Uh, wow. th there was no roof, th no ceiling. There was no rooms like this. This is, this is all new. And good thing that I'm a genius, because I recorded some of this footage back in the day to see what the changes would be like. There was this That's really smart. popular one, uh, the hanging guy. Uh, during construction, there was this construction worker that would be hanging around somewhere for his dear life, and they would change where he was every patch. And right? he would Until always just be hanging? Construction was completed. What and the they fuck? Finally, gave him a rest, and here he is. This is him. That's the hanging guy. This video Jesus is sponsored Christ. by World Flipper. Okay. Link in the description below. Yeah, I, I didn't see that at all. Like, mysterious world. I, I do really kind of wish that I was able to play Final Fantasy back then and see all of those cool things. Dude, these the phone games make bank. That's the why they keep paying people together. for this shit. An epic pinball adventure mm -hmm. awaits. That's right. World Flipper is a pinball action add game add, with yeah. RPG elements. Or well, the thing is, though, like, retro 2D what's good about ads on YouTube is that if you don't like watching them, you can literally just click through the ad and you don't ever have to worry about it style pixel graphic. Players choose a character aligned with one of six elements and each yeah. of them has special skills. The gameplay is super unique as it takes all the fun reaction based precision of pinball and combines it with Mordana got built up by Dormans over time. Yeah, I'd never seen that before either. Co -op boss battles and take down powerful raid bosses together. So and cool. Actually published by Kakao Games and developed wow. by Psy Games. So if amazing. It looks interesting to you. Go pre register in the link in the description below and you'll receive in game rewards including Oh my god. Four star unit Arisa and this looks like such a good game, guys. And now back wow. To One of the things that I missed I can't the most wait. in Final Fantasy XIV are some of the really cool skills that we used to have. For instance, Bard had this AOE called Reign of Death, okay. and it just looked really cool. You would do a backflip and that run is arrows badass. from above in death. And Dragoons! Oh man, they had a pole dance. It was great. Wait, what? What a good AOE. That's the one that everybody misses and is always asking for to come back. But now we just have these guys. That's not, not necessarily a pole dance. There's like some different ways that like there are Tibetan monks that uh, use their staff and they can even jump on their staff to do certain attacks and certain things like that. So it's not exactly pole dancing. The same. And don't even get me started How do you on know Shadow that? Flare. I still this keep it on cool. my bar to remember it. Can I talk about glitches? I is that okay? In the beginning of Stormblood, when summoners first got Bahamut, uh, we figured out a way to keep Bahamut out forever. But yet, yeah, naturally, I, I decided to make a music video That's about really it. That's really good. It's very good. Yeah. One of my best things I've ever made. Wow. There was also this really good glitch where you could spin with your monkey. Very merry made this video. They uh, it's a work they of have art. this in WoW. Can I talk about Diadem? Yeah, you can do that in WoW. Yeah, Diadem. This content does not exist in the game anymore. Yeah, this what is the fuck is this? actually one of the rare cases in Final Fantasy XIV history where there's content that you cannot play. Well, besides what 1.0. This was introduced in Heavensward and was one of the first like exploration style contents where what they wanted this? you to fly around these different floating islands and farm things to get materials. Like it would drop random gear. It was pink That's... gear and the stats on them were randomized. So you could get like a chess piece with like five stats maxed out, like crit, direct hit. Well, direct hit didn't exist at the You time. know what's so fucking sad about this is that this is exactly how like Mythic Plus dungeon gearing used to be in... in legion and people hated it but final fantasy took it out of the game like that's the best thing about it is like i see this and it's like yeah 
well, yeah, like Final Fantasy, like WoW was like, hey, can I borrow that? Uh, we need this for our game. And they just put it in there instead. But crit, determination, bad. Yeah, it's spell annoying. speed, all maxed out. But what it escalated to was everybody would just sit around on what we called Dino Island, and we would just kill dinosaurs for hours on end until Littlefoot's mom appeared, and then we would kill Littlefoot's mom. Or rather, Littlefoot's mom would kill us with a meteor attack. But eventually, we might get her down. And then they introduced this, like... So exactly like every like that's exactly like every fucking like wow like this is like Corthia or like any of the other like wow features like i feel like blizzard has never been able to transcend timeless isle it's like they've just been stuck on timeless isle for years that's all it's been is just timeless isle timeless isle it's like well this is timeless isle but whenever you get these items they identify to this thing instead it's it's so annoying crazy huge man raid on it and it was rare for it to spawn in the first place like i only did it twice and i only was able to beat it the one time but this thing would drop one weapon yeah one person out of the entire 120 whatever it was instance would get it and it had random stats what and the it was fuck? better than the raid weapon so everybody at the time was screaming bloody murder that this was gonna ruin final fantasy 14 the game would be irreparable and, and everybody would quit the game obviously it turned out fine and nobody cared do you even know what this weapon was no you probably don't have you what ever the even seen fuck? one no because it didn't matter but yeah that was a fun time i actually really like to do dev but then again I, I like the really grindy stuff in mmo so I, I have something wrong with me i'm gonna talk about some class stuff now back in heaven's word bard and machinist were casters yeah they, they would go into a special dps mode where they did more damage if they casted their spells uh i mean casted their arrows and gunshots what some the people like uh, those people need some help and i talked about the cross class system oh my god dude you know what's funny to me is like in WoW, like there's always like if you can come up with like if there's any system in WoW that was really shitty back in the day, it's like WoW players, they love getting fucked. And it's like if it's some really, really dog shit system, like a fucking Titan forging or like any of these, like the legendary ring in, in WoW. Like, you could fucking mention it, and people be like, man, remember that? And then everybody like, man, those were the good days. Back whenever it meant something. Uh-huh. I remember that. And, like, that's the one thing that, like, WoW has. It's just there's always got to be those guys that can never fucking just admit that, like, some system or something like that is just dog shit them in the last video but honestly there's some really interesting things to go on about that like with warrior uh right now they have a nascent this? flash which is an ability to heal themselves for damage that they do but That's they good. don't always have this and it's still locked behind level 76 well back in a realm of born warrior had bloodbath that's cool. warriors loved this it was their bread and butter yeah. and would basically sustain them in all dungeon pulls they wouldn't need a healer but in stormblood That's they awesome. removed it and uh warriors were very sad about that because they you now they needed a healer to heal them, and that was just no good. Something so really dumb, funny dude. with the cross-class system. That's so uh, dumb. When you took off your job stone, and you just became, instead of, like, the job, the class, uh, you could cross-class even more things. Oh, I actually have some right here. Bloodbath. Foresight. This was a tank cooldown. Yeah, on my black mage. What the Flash. <laughs> cross-class was, was so bad, yeah. AoE, like, aggro getter. Um, but yeah, I could also get Provoke. Uh, you could go into a 24-man raid on a Black Mage or Thaumaturge, and you could just provoke the boss. <gasps> there it is! Ring of Thorns! I still That's have kind of cool, in a way. It is definitely kind of cool. But I, I like how a lot of Final Fantasy players are not, like, super nostalgic for things that were just goofy and bad. Like, I can guarantee you, if they had, like, that Cleric Stance thing in World of Warcraft... You would go on the classic WoW forums and people be like, man, I remember whenever this game was hard, man, this shit used to mean something. And then there'd be somebody in there like, true, dude, they don't make games like they used to. It's all this, uh, you know, Twitch reflexes stuff like Fortnite or whatever it is. And they're like, yeah. And like, that's all it is. <laughs> That's all it is on like the WoW forums. It's so bad. I'm on old summoner and 
there's provoke. And there's raging strikes and blood for blood. And protect. I gotta protect. And back in the day, with healers, when you would yeah. zone into a dungeon, everybody would stand still and wait for you. Why? Well, because you needed to cast protect on them, of course. I still have oh, it on yeah, my bar. Of course. It's right here. And then in a raid, you would cast stone skin on everybody. This was like a shield. And then if you had a scholar in your group, you would make them cross class stone skin so that they could help you put protect on everybody. One That's of the smart. biggest changes to tanks over the years was tank stance. Tank stance used to reduce your damage taken and reduce your damage that you dealt. Yeah, this so is Paladin like how all defensive stance. Shield stands. oath, and then they also had sword oath, and sword oath was their damage stance. But sword because oath. tank stance would reduce your damage by 20%, it became standard where a raid group would just have their tanks never in tank stance because we couldn't lose 20 percent damage to that we had dps checks to make man they, they really god damn, i thought they would lose aggro that sounds yeah that sounds dumb as fuck man uh, i didn't want to lose damage i didn't even realize like we've never gotten to the point in like final fantasy where we've hit a dps check I i'm i'm waiting to to, to get to that point where we actually hit a legitimate solid fucking wall DPS check. I don't know when that's going to be, though. Vanilla Warrior? Yeah, that's the thing. Is uh, Well, actually, the funny thing about that now is uh, they added defensive stance back into the game. And it does the same thing that this defensive stance used to do. But to be fair, it's like much more situational. Use melee accessories, so they would go steal the Dragoon's accessories and put them on instead because they had strength. And a tank that Smart. was doing this, never in tank stance and strength accessories, would do about as much damage as another DPS. But yeah, this is uh, like Mr. Pandaria. This was a fun one. Uh, Astrologian's cards used to be completely different. And, and by different, I mean each one of them was different. Balance was actually the only one that would be a damage buff. Everything else did different stuff like a crit buff or a speed buff. And it was actually really fun to just give a, a melee the speed buff because like a monk is already fast, right? So you give them the speed buff that's to go cool. even faster. Yeah, I, I do think that's cool. And then they would cool. just run out of TP. It would just go so fast that they would run out of resource and they can't attack anymore. Smart. So then the Astrologian would extend the speed buff on them. And that's why an astrologer's pose looks like this, and they look all smug. Dungeons used to reward tomes differently than they do now. What they used to do was reward the tomes for each boss. But you know what people did? They would run Kill this the first dungeon, boss. specifically Brave Flox's hard mode, they would do the big pull all the way to the boss, Yeah. they would lock all the mobs out of the boss arena, and then they would kill Reset the boss it. and then leave. They wouldn't do the rest of the dungeon. See, this is what happens if you have design like that. I did that so much. Yeah, this is what you do. So what you need to understand whenever you make games is that if a player has the ability to optimize the fun out of your game, they will optimize every bit of fun out of your game and they will hate you for doing it. They will get mad at you that they made their experience worse. And you know what? It's your fault because you put that in the game. People are always going to go for the path of least resistance. Because that was more time efficient yep. than just doing the full dungeon. Exactly. For the tomes. So Square Enix didn't like that. I wonder why. And so they made it so all the uh, endgame tomes have to come from the last boss instead. Wow, so yeah, this, this too. dungeon is what we did all the time for relic farming back in uh, Realm Reborn. And actually, dungeons, we used to get three of them per patch. You know, they changed this because we've gotten all different types of content now, but they used to do three dungeons every single patch. That's why the list of a Realm Reborn There's dungeons a lot of is them. so long. Look at it. I have like... You know how many level 50 dungeons I have? I think I have two. I, I got I have two level 50 dungeons. That's pretty much about fucking it. After answers will get mad at other players for not thinking like them. Well, that's because you're wasting their time. Like that's that's the biggest issue, right? Is if a game this is a problem that like WoW has. And it, it had a lot in like in classic WoW, especially, is that optimization in the game was so toxic to other people, but it was also toxic to not want to optimize. So you had people that were like playing specs that were bad and you could play the bad spec and it was fine, but you were still intentionally playing a bad spec. It was like this weird fucking like catch 22 that just made everybody frustrated with each other.
and it was just in general not good for the game compared to heaven's word they went down to two dungeons per patch storm like they Guild. went down yeah, to two you do. or one dungeons per patch and now this expansion they've only done one dungeon per patch mm -hmm. and that is not a bad thing it's because we get different types of content than just dungeons oh yeah, yeah. and in dunscathe you know this proto ultima boss oh, um, yeah. this guy was that. not always there when Dunscathe first came out, that was not there. It was actually a succubus boss. Anyway, I mean, there's still so much more I could talk about the history, but these are just some other ones I thought up in my head, but that'll be it for now. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Okay, bye. I, I do really like watching these videos because they give me the ability to look back and like compare it to like how WoW has evolved over the years. And I'll start like kind of drawing comparisons and seeing similarities. I think that's what I really enjoy the most about it.